Texas, meanwhile, has plenty of energy problems, but Bitcoin mining does not seem to be one of them. Kate Rooney is live in Rockdale, Texas, to explain. Kate, tell us what you found. I see lots and lots of servers behind you. There's lots of servers. You can probably hear the buzz of these supercomputers here in Rockdale, Texas. They're stacked about 20 feet in the air, and I'm looking down this hallway. It's about four or five football fields long, and some in Texas are worried about what more buildings like this could mean for the Texas energy grid. The miners, though, say that they shouldn't be worried. Energy here in the state is among the cheapest in the country. Texas operates its own power grid. It's deregulated, but it's proven to be pretty fragile during times of peak demand. The state saw rolling blackouts in the winter. It sees the same thing during heat waves like we're seeing right now. And miners say that they shut down operations in times like that because they buy energy on long-term contracts at a stable price. They can often sell it back into the market when the demand spikes and there's a premium for prices. And since they buy that energy in bulk years ahead of time, they say that they're not competing with Texans at home. So in theory, yes, right? Everybody is using the same. If you're an ERICOT, it's 90% of Texas, 26 million customers, 8 million electric IDs, right? So meters. Everybody's using the same series of power. Are you competing with us? You're not competing with us. And guys, when there is an energy squeeze, this entire building shuts down within a matter of seconds. They get a notification from ERCAT, that's the state's operator of the energy grid. They turn this whole building off. We saw it happen here yesterday. It was about 98 degrees. The whole building shut off. But during that time, they're losing a key source of income, new Bitcoin. And it's really up to the miners to make that call. No one is holding them accountable. The, it's up to them. Basically, they, they argue that they will stop using it if the price is above a certain amount. And that does make sense. It doesn't make sense for a mining farm to keep running once the electricity price is above a certain break-even point. Can you cue me when we're back? And guys, the miners also say during normal times, they help balance the power grid by bringing demand to towns like this one here in Rockdale and other rural places. The CEO of Windstone told me that he's getting calls, emails, texts every day from miners trying to move over here from China. He said one miner asked him to move 50,000 machines. He says he doesn't have room here. And to start something like this from scratch, it can take between nine and 18 months minimum. Back to you.